Hello and welcome back to What's Up Doc, the arts, humanities, and social sciences schools program to highlight different things that we do in this school. My name is Dr. Joanna Nielsen. I am the assistant dean of the school. And with me I have Michael Giles, who is the director of the art program and is a mixed media artist, I believe. I, I've worked in different mediums, yes. Uh, primarily painting and drawing, but I do mix things up a bit. So, Absolutely. And how many faculty do you all have right now? Uh, currently, we have two full-time faculty members, um, myself and uh, Marisa Ruchowski. Uh, she does our ceramics and our 3D stuff. I handle most of the 2D stuff, primarily. We also have various um, adjunct professors who help us with uh, introductory studio courses and, of course, some of our um, uh, art appreciation and survey courses. Absolutely. So when you t students take art appreciation, hopefully they'll be able to better understand and appreciate and articulate the value of art in society. What can art contribute to? What has art contributed to society? Yeah, that's a great point. Um, you know, we do uh, really tailor that course uh, as a means to give the students a sense of what the value of art is throughout. You know, it's in the title, Art yeah. Appreciation, How to Appreciate the Arts. Um, and I think that uh, really the arts, if you think about it, uh, really permeates a lot of what we are as a people, as a society, as a culture. Um, we, we express ourselves through our arts. It really goes into every part of our society, uh, every part of our world, whether it's our you know, religious art, that, you know, which is so, something that's such a big deal around the, you know, the Western art canon, if you think of all the artworks in uh, Italy and such. Um, of course, uh, art uh, expands in so many ways. Think about you know, just even in, in movies, that's, that's an art making. Theater, that's art making. Music, that's art making. Uh, in terms of the visual arts, uh, you know, we also, of course, which we primarily work with in our department, but it, it really is a part of our, how we express ourselves as a people, express ourselves as a culture. These are the things that, that live on beyond us, and we get a sense of what uh, a group of people was, were like based upon the arts that they make, the mm -hmm. arts that they value, the arts that we preserve. Absolutely, I cannot imagine teaching history without an important art element, all different kinds of art, because of what it can say about our experiences. And we hopefully expose our children pretty young through the education process to what they may not think of as art, but what they're reading, the literature, or the pieces they're seeing on the screen, the pieces they're watching in the video, might be um, something that will impact them for the rest of their lives. Yeah, so. I think the visual aspect of things, it's, you know, it's around us everywhere. Um, you know, we're on our phones looking through images and pictures that, um, that we're taking, that we're looking at, that we're interacting with. And, and it's, it's, a, it's a part of what we do. And I think, yes, my son is definitely on, on the computer screens and <laughs> looking at uh, lots of images and, and art. So I think it is uh, one of the ways that we're going to pass on information to future generations. Absolutely. And I think it's also provided a lot more children's programming, too. When I was growing up, there was Electric Company and <laughs> Sesame Street, I get my age there. And it's sort of expanded from there to be an amazing tool to express art and to talk about art as, a, as an important cultural value. So with that in mind, what about the art program here at LMU? What is the, the nature of the major itself? Well, the art program here at LMU, I think, is uh, one that strives to give students a, a basis in the studio arts, um, the traditional kind of studio arts education. Um, one of the things uh, about it, we, we do have uh, two primary tracks in terms of uh, majoring in 2D art or in 3D art. Um, so a student who uh, maybe is, likes to do ceramics or three-dimensional work can focus on that. And students who like maybe more drawing and, uh, and painting can, can focus on that as well. Uh, so uh, you know, there is overlap, obviously. We, enc we encourage all our students to take classes um, in other um, specialties in the arts that they maybe not as proficient in, but um, they can definitely uh, concentrate on one of the two tracks there. We also have, of course, a, here a um, uh, a, a teacher licensure program um, at LMU, mm -hmm. and art is one of those uh, programs that has that. So a student can uh, take their art classes, take education classes, and when they're done, they can actually be um, ready to be certified as a teacher in the state of Tennessee and be able to continue their career as an art educator at that point. Um, and of course, we've also just recently added a, uh, a new program in a pre-professional um, curriculum for um, uh, art therapy, where students will actually uh, take an art uh, course and then also uh, a minor in psychology, which will prepare them to go on to uh, apply for graduate school in art therapy. Absolutely, that's a growing field today, I assume. Yeah, that is a growing field. It's a, you know, it's one of the ways that um, you know art is uh, helping to deal with mental health issues. Uh, you know, uh, obviously, people uh, there's different ways that people react 
to their mental health needs, and people sometimes have different ways of expressing themselves. Um, you know, maybe some people talk therapy is all they need, but some people maybe are more visual, they're more hands-on, they need some other way to, uh, to get the information out, to deal with pro you know, the processes going on in their heads. So sometimes art helps unlock that. You know, art is, a, is an expressive medium. Uh, when I ask my students uh, in Art 100, the Art Appreciation course, you know, at the beginning of the semester, what is art about? It, oftentimes, expressing yourself comes out very early on. Um, so yeah, that, that, I think the art therapy is a way that um, people can express what's happening inside, any, any issues and turmoils and um, things that they're dealing with. So uh, art is able, you know, art therapists are able to take that information um, with their psychology and their counseling background and be able to um, help people unlock and work through uh, any issues they may be having. Absolutely, sounds like a wonderful career path. Yeah, I, th I, I agree. What else do you think an art major might be interested in pursuing as a career after they leave LMU? Well, a career in art, uh, you know, I think it'd be very rewarding. Um, you know, obviously, um, there's always the, the the myth of the starving artist. You know, <laughs> I've never met any starving artist. We we all got jobs. <laughs> we all we all do things. Um, obviously, that you know, a, an art degree can prepare you definitely for the arts field. Um, you know, whether it's working in galleries, working in museums, working for um, art arts nonprofits. Um, you know, um, even working as a as a, just an independent um, working artist uh, that also stems from the the work that we do daily in the studio. Um, so uh, yes, uh, it's not to say that it's necessarily going to be always easy. Um, you know, you don't always sell all the things that you make, but you sell some of the things that you make. And depending on, uh, you know, uh, on what your drive is, what your um, career path is, what you choose to do, um, there's definitely lots of um, places to go within the arts um, in terms of uh, expressing oneself and using your creative talents to, uh, to bring to, a, to any kind of medium, you know, whether it's, you know, production, uh, plays, uh, you know, uh, paintings, illustrations. Um, so I think there's a lot of definitely, uh, for someone who's career, uh, creatively minded and who wants to kind of engage with the arts and engage with their own talents, I think uh, in our educa education in the arts, it can only be helpful to them. How does the art program help prepare LMU students to become professional artists? Professional artists, yes. Well, one of the great things that we do um, is we definitely instill with our students um, the need for work outside of just the painting and the drawing and the sculpting and the ceramics. Um, oftentimes, the students who are majors are usually pretty talented to begin with. So they, they've got the talent to make an artwork. Um, so that maybe is not the, the most difficult part of, an, of a career in the arts. One of the things we always have them do is start to write about their art. Uh, I think students don't realize the fact that professional artists, you know, we're, we're academics in a lot of ways, you know, besides even just me being obviously in academia. Um, but even if you're not actively in academia, you are an academic, a scholar of the arts. You have to think about the, uh, the information that has come before you. What are your influences? How do those influences then tie into the work you're doing now? And that comes from research, researching topics that maybe you weren't thinking about to begin with. Topics on, on history, uh, you're a history professor here. Topics in, in music, topics in psychology, topics in all kinds of things that maybe will start to lead you to develop a body of work that says something new to the world. Uh, so yeah, we, all, we, have, we have to instill in them um, you know, the idea of researching topics, reading information, reading arts, reading uh, theory, reading um, you know, all kinds of information, and putting that together to make a brand new kind of work work out of that and writing about it. Uh, I think that really starts to prepare them to become a professional artist. Uh, when you go to galleries, people aren't always talking about the skill it takes to make something. It's also the ideas behind it. And if the ideas behind it aren't there, um, you know, it, it's, the, the artwork is usually not, not as good. So we, That would lead me to my next question, which is when students have a, a show or even their senior show, how does all of that work they've done before they get to the canvas or the uh, the clay, um, come out and be seen in a show. Yeah, I think we, what you see um, oftentimes in the artwork, when the students have put thought into it, which they do, because we definitely make sure that, that that's a part of it. It's an ongoing process throughout the entire time that they're here, um, developing a body of work, developing 
a style, so to speak, um, you know, um, developing a, a voice of their own. Um, you see that in the artwork when it comes out, when you read their artist statement, and then you start to make the connections that they have made throughout their life from, their, from, from the information they've, they've brought into the, to the artwork themselves, from their history, from their experiences, and you can see it on the canvas. And then when you look at it, and you talk to them, you see that information, it starts to make more sense for the viewer. Once you start to read a little bit about the artwork, read a little bit about their the artist statement they made, um, you start to piece, all the, everything starts to come together. You see a cohesive whole. And that's what we do in their, in their final show, is they, um, you know, oftentimes, um, some programs will, will have students put a capstone show, so to speak, with just a, a little bit of this, a little bit of that throughout their entire career. We don't do that here at LME. We actually push them to, to make a brand new show, a cohesive show that, that centers on a topic of their choosing, so that they, they, have, they are able to express a specific voice of their own um, to, the, to the community. And I think that's important for them. That, that's the way artists work. We don't typically show a hodgepodge of our, of our work we show a, 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 a cohesive whole, a cohesive piece of work, um, you know, in our exhibitions when you have a solo exhibition. So when hopefully the world gets back to a bit more normal, uh, what, where do people have their shows? What about your facilities? Yes, um, uh, you know, uh, our students are um, part of their graduating, uh, the major part of their graduating criteria is they have a show somewhere. Um, we, of course, have a gallery here at LMU, so we often, you know, we do offer them that space. It's usually what they take, because it's a, a place where they can have all their, their family and their friends and their colleagues come together. So we do have a gallery in Cumberland Gap at, in our art center, um, and there, that's where our students present their, their shows. Um, typically, we do have uh, receptions. In the past, we have had receptions for these mm -hmm. shows. Obviously, right now, during this uh, crisis, right now, yeah. we're not able to do that. Um, hopefully we'll be able to get back into that <laughs> in the next coming year or so. But um, that, that is a place where we can uh, you know, put our exhibitions up. The students can have it hanging. Uh, people can come and see that. Um, the facility, of course, doesn't hold just student shows. Um, we do also program um, regional and national artists uh, to come and exhibit at our, at our, at our um, gallery as well. Uh, it's, it's a way to uh, you know, bring the arts here to, uh, to our region, uh, bring it here to, uh, to uh, Claiborne County and to the, to the LMU community. We want them to experience as much of, of the arts that we can find, uh, good, talented artists that are bringing new voices and new ideas to us. Um, so we do that uh, throughout the year at the, at the Cumberland Gap facilities. Speaking of the facilities, and with one last question to wrap us up then, um, how do you encourage students that aren't interested in being a major and taking a class or two? I think we have students that are intimidated. They think, hey, that might be really a lot of fun, but I, I don't know how to draw, I can't draw yes. a box, you know, this kind of thing. I get that question all the time. I, I ask students, hey, why don't you come take a drawing class? I, was, I don't know how to draw. Well, I didn't know trigonometry until I took a class in it. That's the main thing. Yeah. You don't have to know how to do something to learn it. In fact, it's, you, that's why you learn it. Um, you take that first step by coming into the, the place and learning to draw. I always encourage them to come and take the classes. Um, you know, we have classes in all kinds of uh, media, uh, painting, watercolor, uh, ceramics, um, drawing, uh, you know, so uh, classes that are available for any student to come and take. And we really encourage them to take that. I think it, uh, you know, making art is a, is a way to have a, a change in your daily routine, mm -hmm. um, something that you can do um, that's besides uh, going into uh, your labs or your, uh, your lecture courses, something new, something exciting to try. So I definitely encourage students to come and take those classes. and. Uh, Oftentimes when they do, they really, really enjoy it. So Absolutely, I encourage all my majors to want something different, take an art class. I've had one or two take a minor because of it, so give them some different perspective on the world and, and broaden that, and that's all I could ask for for my students. So, Well, thank you very much for your time, Michael thank Giles, you. and thank you all very much for joining us today, and stay tuned. There should be other episodes later on. Goodbye.